Hello everybody, my name is Brandon McGee. I am a home improvement expert and I've been in the home improvement business for 15 years now. We have four days to get this 10 week project done. And guess what, you are lucky enough to be here. Rock it like a DJ. We got our kitchen in, we got the bathroom done. So today I'm gonna show you how to grout in a tile wall. I am so pumped about the suction cups. So as you can see, we have this caulking, and it's all nasty. And I've owned my own construction business five of those 15 years. And I told him I'd be here at 8.15, and the clock says 8.19. So, whenever I first started, my first thing that was hard for me to get a hold of is what tools do I need to start? So along with this video will be a PDF of the 15 tools I recommend before you remodel. These are my 15 tools that I go to for basically any remodeling project that I come across. These are your basic answers to help you get started along your journey of home improvements and this will help build your tool list from there. So what tools were you going to need first? thing you're going to need is a tape measure. These come in various sizes from anywhere from 8 feet, 16 feet, 25 feet, or 35 feet. So before you cut, measure, or do anything to make stuff fit into place, of course you're going to need a tape measure. This one uh, has a wider tape and then it also makes it easier for you to hook onto a board and then quickly mark whatever number you need to cut. So this is the first item that I recommend for your tool bag or your tool pouch is the tape measure. So after you have the tape measure, of course, you're going to need a hammer. Now these come in various weights, but these are great for putting together framing walls or doing any kind of demolition or even hanging a picture or two. These come in various sizes and ounces and then also the heads come in different sizes too. And also there's a difference between a smooth head, which you're gonna to wanna to use for finishing, and then also there's a waffle head that's mostly designed for framing, so that way the waffle head will always grip the nail instead of sliding off like a finish hammer. And then also, the claw is very important whenever picking a hammer. If you, some hammers have a very sharp claw, and then nose kind of make it hard to get to nails because it needs so much to rotate. So I like more of a straight claw, so that way you can get a three inch nail and easily pull it out. Now number three on our 15 tools before we remodel is a multi-purpose screwdriver. These are very handy to have and also they don't take up a whole drawer space because you only need one screwdriver instead of having 11. And then also what's nice about these is you can take them apart and then easily flip it to go from flathead to Phillips head in no time. And then each one of these little compartments also come out and then you can flip these. So these are great for putting together like Ikea furniture or anything like that. And it's easy to find the right head for your screw or bolt that you need to take off. So I highly recommend having a multi-purpose screwdriver. And also the specialty of this one is it's an electrical multi-purpose screwdriver. So it has an end for you to tighten up wire caps really easy without tiring out your fingers. Now for your basic mechanical work or any kind of bicycle work that you have to put together or even changing the oil on the car or the lawnmower. Now an easy way to have access to take off all those nuts and bolts is to have an adjustable wrench. This can adjust multiple sizes and it can go from little to bigger. So these come in various widths. So this one goes up to three quarters of an inch. They also make them to go up to an inch and a half. These are also great for taking off plumbing fittings for any water lines if you're replacing a sink. And it's also great for putting together bicycles or changing the oil in your car. So I definitely recommend an adjustable wrench. And this way, when you have one adjustable wrench, you don't have to have 10 wrenches because most likely you'll have the right size. Now, next on our tool list, number five is the level. If you're planning on building anything, I highly recommend a level. Who knew we'd be taking advice from a little bubble?
profile bubble, you are really on point today. Man, I have a whole new perspective on life, and I'm motivated, ready to take charge. Thanks, Bubble. You get great advice. This little bubble will tell you if things are level. If you put the bubble right in the center, it will tell you if you need to shift anything one way or the other. It's great for having pictures, and it's a definitely must-have for building walls or doing any remodeling. And then also you can check the plumbness of things, how straight it is this way, by doing the same adjustments and then you have another bubble up here. These are also great for making straight lines if you have to cut on drywall or if you have to cut into an old existing wall marking where you need to stop. So that way you can always get a level straight line so that way whenever you put your new drywall in, it will just match right up. So this is definitely a must have. These come in 12 inches, two foot, this one's a four footer, and then they get as big as eight foot. So these will definitely make your life a lot easier when trying to hang pictures straight. Now, another must have item is number six, is a pry bar. These are great for demolition and are good for removing drywall, taking out old nails, and pretty much destroys anything in its path. These come in various sizes too. This one's a 12 inch. They also come in two feet and bigger. So the longer the pry bar is, the more leverage that you will have to take out old nails or anything that gets in your path. So the smaller ones, they're great for tight spaces, but I definitely recommend a two footer for ripping out old screws in flooring and ripping out old nails from drywall. So they will make your life a lot easier. And also you can use this to lift stuff up before you set it in place like a piece of drywall. You can place it under the drywall and then lift it up the recommended half inch off the floor. So I definitely recommend the pry bar. Now, chances are if you're remodeling, you might get into a little bit of electrical work. So my another must have item is number seven, and that is wire strippers. So if you're replacing any outlets or any light fixtures in your home, chances are you're gonna need a set of wire strippers. That way you can strip the wire to get a nice fresh piece of copper because old copper, once it's twisted, it's frail and brittle. So I recommend whenever putting in new light fixtures or outlets to cut off that half inch and then strip a new piece. So that way, whenever you're connecting your light fixture, it has a new wire to grasp a hold of and it will have true power and it won't be deflected or you won't have to take it apart because one of the wire broke. Now this wire stripper, is really nice because you can see it has these little cutouts for 12-2 wire, so that way you can strip the plastic sheathing right off with no problems. So, these are another must-have items if you're gonna tackle any electrical work in your home. Now, number eight's very important to have in your home for remodeling work, because if you're putting up new drywall, you're definitely gonna need a drill. So, what I'm gonna recommend is a cordless drill. Cordless drills are sweet because if you're like me, you cannot stand extension cords or any kind of cord to trip over or get in your way. So I definitely recommend a battery power drill. Uh, this one's a 20 volt. They come in various sizes and the power is rated by the amperage of the battery. So this one's a 20 volt, so it's pretty strong and it's got lots of power, but they also come in 18 volt. This is pretty much the same as a 20 volt. And then also as small as 12 and six volt. So the higher the number of the battery is how much torque it has and how long it lasts. So smaller batteries mean low torque and they won't last as long. So definitely pick a drill that's going to be according to the size of your project. If you have a big project, I'm going to definitely recommend a stronger drill. But if you only need a drill occasionally, you might want to just go with a 12 volt or a 6 volt drill. So another must have item is the cordless drill. Now, another must have item, if you're getting into any remodeling, is to have a circular saw. Now, this one's a cordless circular saw. Remember how I can't stand extension cords. <laughs> so, everything, all my tools are pretty much cordless tools. I have a corded circular saw, but I rarely use it. I only use it for like big deck projects or stuff like that where I need a lot of power and I'm gonna be cutting a lot. But for the most part, I use cordless circular saws for everything. This one's also a 20 volt 
and then they also come in 18 volts but they don't really come any smaller than that because they need a little bit of power so these are great for cutting two by fours and if you're doing any remodeling these will definitely make your life a lot easier because then all you have to do is find a saw and then pick it up and start cutting but if you had a if you had a corded saw you're gonna have to find a saw you're gonna have to find an extension cord you're gonna have to plug that extension cord in somewhere and then see if it reaches to the area that you're working ah don't worry about that you can skip all that with a cordless saw these are great things and handy to have if you're gonna get into any framing or remodeling work. Now, if you bought an older home, chances are there's a lot of cracks in the exterior or interior that need filled to prevent air from getting in your house, and it also helps cut down on bugs that are able to get into your house. So you're definitely gonna need a cock gun. These caulking guns come in two different styles. This one's a dripless. What a dripless means is is whenever you're applying pressure to the caulking with the dripless, you won't have to relieve pressure. So then they're a little harder to squeeze, but they relieve the pressure for you. And then the other version is this regular caulking gun. And this one, you can apply the pressure the same way. The only difference is, is afterwards, after you're done applying the caulking to your crack, that you have to relieve the pressure afterwards or else it will keep shooting out. But these are very, they're, they're very friendly on your wrist compared to the dripless. They kind of are a little harder to squeeze, but you don't have to relieve the pressure. But this one is a lot easier to relieve and it doesn't hurt your hands when you're squeezing it. So I de definitely recommend the basic cock gun. But either way, one of these will help you fill in a crack in your home. Now, number 11 on the 15 tools before you remodel. Of course, after you're done remodeling your project, you're gonna need a paintbrush and a roller. Even if you're not doing a big remodeling project, I definitely recommend having a paintbrush and a roller around the house. Because if you scuff up the wall and you have paint to touch it up, it's easy just to grab a brush and then touch up those black or dark marks on your wall. And also you can use a paint roller to do bigger touch-ups on your wall too. So these are definitely a must have to help you finish whatever project you completed or built. Because remember, nothing's finished until it's painted. Now, number 12 on the list is a multi-tool. Now these are fairly new to the market. I think they're about five years old now, but ever since I've got one, I love it. And I used it a lot on remodeling projects. Multi-tools is an oscillating head. You can see it vibrates back and forth. And what that does is creates a cutting action and you can also swap out the heads and then put on a different head, like a sander head or a widening cutting head. So that way these are great for like cutting in the bottom of doorways for putting in new uh, wood flooring or tile flooring. And they're also great for putting in outlets in the wall when you want to make fine precision cuts without making a mess of a sawzall or a circular saw. So these are a great must have item and they're also cordless. So if you're doing a lot of sanding, I recommend having one of these because they're lightweight, cordless, and they get the job done faster than doing it by hand. So another must have item is the multi-tool. You'll be surprised how much you use this once you have one. Now, when you just can't get a grip on something, I definitely recommend having a pair of channel locks in the house. These are great for multiple items and they have a wide clamping power, so they are great for multiple uses in your home. So if you're replacing sink traps or any kind of doing plumbing work, these are very handy to have for taking the traps apart. And then also they're great for taking off jar lids off of cans when you just, you just take them off with no issues. So channel locks are very handy to have because they give you more leverage to grip down on the nut and bolt and it gives you more cranking power because if the longer they are, the more power you'll have to take off that old nut or they're great for taking off rusted bolts too. So another item for your tool pouch or tool bag is a set of channel locks. Super handy to have and I highly recommend it. Now, number 14 on the list is of course a flashlight. And every contractor's bag is a flashlight. These are super handy to have, and if you're doing any remodeling work, chances are you cut the power and you can't see. So, 
so. In every home, you should definitely have a flashlight because in emergency situations, these are very ha handy to have and can save you from being left out in the dark. So number 14 on the list is a flashlight and everybody should have a flashlight. Now last on our 15 tools you need before you remodel, I probably should have had this number two, but I made it number 15 so you guys wouldn't forget it, is the speed square. These are in every contractor's tool bag and they are essential for doing any wall framing or remodeling work. Because if you need a straight cut, these are handy to have to make straight lines and you can also use them as a saw guide whenever cutting 2x4s. The speed square is very handy to have and also mine, I customized it with some holes. So that way you can put a pencil in the hole and then mark your measurement on your wood or 2x4 and then make rip cuts easily by sliding the speed square down the 2x4. So these are definitely a must have item for you to do any wall framing or drywall because these will make your life a lot easier. Thank you all for joining today. I hope that you found these 15 tools will help you on your next remodeling project. So if you want, you can print out this PDF and then take this list to your local building supply store. So that way you know what tools you need to have your basics covered for remodeling or customizing your home. So don't forget to look out for my future course, Handy Homeowner, where I teach you my pro tips and tricks that I learned over 15 years of how to improve your home faster. Because if you're spending a lot of time on YouTube looking for all these videos, you don't know if you're getting pro results or not. But my methods are tried and true and I've learned how to make everything efficient to a process where it's easy to understand and anybody can pick it up in no time. So I want to help you start customizing your home and I can't wait for you to get started with Handy Homeowner. So thank you all for joining today and I will see you next time. And thank you for signing up for the 15 tool PDF. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Handy Homo. My name is Brandon McGee. I've been customizing and improving homes for 15 years now. And I love making everything look better than that it was when I showed up. So today, as you can see walking up the stairs, 